council meeting of the village of Armida will now come to order. Will everyone rise from the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clark, call the roll, please. Shaw? Here. Clark? Here. Conan? Here. Woolock? Here. Baylor? Here. Cooper? Here. Selke? Here. Who was the agenda? What's the council's wishes? Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. Who is supported? Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion here. At this time, we've opened up the floor to citizen comments. If you want to address the council at this time, you have three minutes to do so. State your name for the record if you do. If not, we will move on. There's no presentations tonight. The next is the administrative reports. We have F and B here, and Chris and uh, Steve. Uh, uh, we just received this. I understand Chris had a problem with the uh, printing, so uh, Chris, do you want to go ahead? Um, yeah, we had a pretty quiet month in uh, July. We had an inflow and average flow of 77,000 gallons a day. Uh, our high max flow for the day during that month was 150,000 gallons. Um, we did our normal work hours for the computerized maintenance management system. They were attached in appendix D. Or on the back of what you guys have. We got our DMR QA 36 results back, which stands for Discharge Monitoring Report <coughs> Quality Assurance. We, had, we got all our results back and they're all within compliance, uh, came back good. We've already spoken a little bit about the uh, sample that was taken for land at, about the arsenic being off the table three at the last meeting. We have ordered, as you guys know, the 10 ton condensing unit for the air conditioner and the gas detection system for the grid building. We expect them to be in the next few weeks. We have four alarm call outs. Three of them were power failures, power bumps. We had to go to the lift station each time and to the plant. So we got to reset everything at the plant make sure the lift station is running and everything's operational because we don't want to get the sanitary ski rolling flow so we go there first and then we did have one channel one alarm um, we did have a high flow uh, on july 8th i got the call 4 30 in the morning arrived and when i got there the plant had already fallen below 270 gallons a minute uh, so i just reset the alarm and went about my day We had, this is in August, but we had a pig grease discharge on the And the DEQ came out last Thursday and popped an inspection. To me, that was one of the things he talked about, was getting rid of that. Because it's every time it rains or snows or anything, eventually it's gonna get full and it's gonna overflow the drying bed because it's completely wrecked the drying bed. It will not drain, it's just all about the release. Um, I'd like to propose a couple of options, um, maybe talk to you guys about how you would like to go about getting rid of it. Do we know where it came from? This time we do, we pop my ankles, me. Steve, and, yeah. yeah, and we went directly over. We talked to Lance. Well, he said, you know, whatever it takes to do. And again, you know, we we put that stuff in the drying bed. We still had the previous from a year and a half or December 2014, the first of day. And like Chris is saying, I mean, it's messed up the drying beds. It, we've got to get them back to where they were. So. We basically got, we just got to clean it out we've got to get rid of that which you know, we should be, and we should be able to build plants yes yeah. what did my, what did they did the iron man and grain redo they spilled pig fat and 
wash it down the drain basically is what I got out of it. Yeah. Because there's no grease trap. And this is what they use they put in the dog food. Dog right, food. yes. And he had said they had just had a delivery the day before. So something overflowed somewhere. It wasn't near as bad as what we had for yeah. I had Metro Sewer out, they backed it out to this station. Um, they said they will not take it. I asked them when he was there. Um, there's a couple places that might take it that I can call. If you guys are all in favor of getting a couple prices and uh, giving them to Steve so we can get it taken care of. Yeah, sure. That would be great. With BQ, Dennis Ryan, he's, he's 100% improvement, he said. He still he's, he likes that you guys are spending money and upgrading stuff. He said he's still got to write a nasty letter, so we'll see what it says. So, but he said he's happy. It looks a lot better than the last time we was here. So that's about it. A little over three minutes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you guys some grace. You have some grace there. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yep. Uh, Treasurer's report, do you have any to draw on that that you want to address? Okay, well, his on reports, uh, street administrator first. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, today, uh, Martin and uh, the President and the uh, Sewer Administrator and myself met with Mr. and Mrs. Magel down at uh, T Street uh, with um, one of their representatives, Ben Dot, but his name is really sweet. Um, we gave him the plan that you see before you, and uh, Mr. Sweet said he would take it back, have his culvert guy go over it. And uh, report back to us, and that's where it stands. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Thank you. Uh, by the commission, uh, Mr. Coleman, did you have uh, any? Yeah, no, I haven't. Just meet over in a minute. Okay, very good. Thanks. I have something real quick for police. Please, yes. Go ahead. Um, I have a little uh, memo from uh, Chief Patrick regarding the fair. Um, I just going to put a little something together, if that's all right. I'd like to read it. Um, it said the Armada Fair was a success despite the change in the weather. The week-long event brought with it a good amount of work for the village officers. Long hours were put in by all the staff to ensure the fair was a safe event for the visitors as well as for those in our own community. There were no exceptional crimes reported. A variety of enforcement actions were taken by officers on the fairgrounds and in the village. Several, several misdemeanor arrests were made and many traffic violations were issued. More importantly, however, officers were available to assist those in need in whatever way possible. Hosting an event of this size can be a challenge for any community, and especially one like Armada. I am very proud of the residents of Armada and our officers for their work and understanding. So, and I also want to let you know from the school, um, we did have a family just come in and sign up for School of Choice based on what they saw at the fair and talking to other families. I know it brought one family here at School of Choice, so that's a really, that's really nice. Thank you. Can I, have, can I say something for the parks? Yes. Uh, there was a point, uh, complaint that came in that the flag was um, stuck up the top of the flagpole. So I went over there and checked it out and I couldn't, uh, the rope is broken. I couldn't get it to come down. It's kind of like jammed up into the pulley at the top. So I got, uh, I asked Wes Martin if he would come and help us. And he did. He brought his fucking truck out and they just, you know, boom, it's, it's done. So the flag is down. I washed it. We'll get some more rope and some more clips and we'll get it back going. But a special thanks to Wes. Uh, we're just coming by on his way home from a long day. He stopped and it took about 10 minutes, but he did it. So I owe him dinner. We're happy to do that. And, it, and he'll string it back up again when I get the part. So Good. Thank you. Yeah. I have something also from the uh, Water Commission I just wanted to bring everybody's attention. I think you guys all got this on the, uh, I think it was 6 1 2016 uh, from Ed Saratowski. And it's just FYI so everybody knows it's coming up. But we got to come up with $243,658 for our filters, the arsenic removal vessels. So I'm just bringing it up. As That's the filter medium and size yeah. tank. That's correct. And it's $243,000 and change. Yeah, so. Now that was a government mandated program. I believe so. Do they have something available to help? I mean, we can't be the only ones that are in this boat now. They forced this on us. Maybe we can do some checking on that. Yeah, I could. Uh, might be able to go through our engineer. 
the probably the option that that they would have would be like an SRF again. Where well, they might have to do something. That. Yeah, Sometimes rural well. development has money. The water department got an extra several hundred thousand laying in. No, this is so disgusting. They no. made us take something we didn't need in the first place, and now we got to pay quarter of a million dollars. A little ridiculous. Well, it's up quite a bit from what we was told originally to, which is very disconcerting. Oh, yeah, it's supposed to be a system that ran so good and clean. Well, I believe that it said it's the life expectancy is 15 years, if I, if I remember correctly, and that's coming up for those filters. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you start doing no. some checking lights. I'm just saying, you might want to check with the engineer to help you. Roll. Yeah. Is that yeah. who we, we uh, yeah. Okay. I can get you that number, Mike, if you need it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. You might want to call the office. And we can use all the kind of money we can get like that. Yep. <coughs> okay, general business. Uh, we have the consent agenda. Approval of the regular council meeting minutes of August the 8th. And the payment of bills. What is the council's wishes? Mr. President, I'll move that the consent agenda be accepted as presented. Support. Hi, Mr. Kabelke. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. I abstain from the minutes. Okay. Got that there, Mr. Mm -hmm. Old business, East Main Street uh, project update. Mr. Bell. There's nothing to report new on that. We're still waiting to have uh, HRC come back with the uh, repair to the Fall Street. Did they ever fix that couple of mailboxes? Yes. Did they? Yep. All right. New business. A F and B uh, extension operation maintenance contract. What does the council push us, Mr. Uh, Park? Did you want to address that first? Yeah. Uh, I was looking at this paperwork. It was just uh, real quick here. It looks like it's a ten-year thing, but you've extended it from. Uh, July 1st, 2011, now we're into 16, so that was five. And now we're gonna, this new one will expire if we go with the five years, will expire June 30th, year 2021. Okay. Yeah. Correct, okay. Just so everybody knows, cause I, my eye caught it and it looked like a yeah. 10 year No, so it's but a five year, I just tried to repeat what you'd already Right, mm -hmm. right, okay. Well, can okay, we change that to, sir, to uh, go ahead with the, uh, July 1st, 16, 221 for the five years additional. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't like the wording. Yeah, I can change it. Because it looks back in 2011. Uh, someone else is going to pick up on that too, I think. You know? Sure. So uh, I, I saw the two and originally brought to uh, okay. also to Mr. Clark's attention in what I saw. So I would like to have that changed to five years uh, and to the 20, 2016 instead. Anybody have any more questions for, uh, for Blair? Uh, we went over this last time when he was here. If nobody has any questions, I'll resolve to approve the operation and maintenance contract extension between the Village of Maria and the v operations for a term of five years. Second. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Blair, if you want to make a note uh, of my name, is W O L A K. We gotta leave the C out. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mark saw it. I'm sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> I, I, will, I will make sure that that doesn't happen again. Oh, I'm you're, sorry. Not, you're not I'm the first sorry. one. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be a roll call. Clark? Yes. Conan? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Belkey? Yes. Wallach? Yes. Thank you, everyone. I'll revise all this stuff. Okay.
maybe Chris. I'll can make sure I get Mark's yeah, name. Maybe Chris right. can move closer. <laughs> yeah. Now I can. Then. Yeah. Small yeah. yeah. choice, our maid. I do that. And Wes is coming to do the stumps too, so he gets a chance. So he's a part of the And I'll get a couple of different option prices together for the three and give it to you. Okay. Or very good. Bring it down to the end of the show. Thank you, Blair. Thank you, Chris. As yes. soon as possible. Thank you. Take care, you guys. Have a good trip. Have a good Thank night. you. The next is our audit report. <coughs> we have uh, uh, Chris, or I should say Curtis, and also Amy here with uh, uh, them. Uh, with him, I should say with him. And uh, we'll invite you to step forward. Then. Thank you, Curtis. Good evening, Village Council, President Olak. Uh, most of you here know who I am, but I'll introduce myself uh, in case you don't. Uh, my name is Curtis McBride, and I'm a CPA for McBride Manley Company. Uh, we are the CPA firm that audits the Village of Armada's books and records and financial statements. How many years? <laughs> About 20 I believe 1976. Okay. Um, I've been with the firm for almost 17 years now. Um, I've actually been involved with the Village's Audit since I started since day one. Uh, with me tonight is also Amy Delio. She's been with our firm, I want to say, nine years. And she's also been involved in the Village's Audit since the first day she started. My father actually started our firm back in 1974. Uh, he specialized as a governmental auditor. Uh, we, do a lot of, uh, we do a lot of governmental audits in the area, St. Clair County, Macomb County, Oakland County. Um, and actually, the Village of Armada was our first audit client. Uh, that was my dad's first audit client, I believe, in 1975 or 1976. So uh, we are very familiar with the village, and it's been a great uh, working relationship, obviously, over the last several years. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm here this evening is to present the results of our audit for the year ended March 31, 2016. Now, before I get into the presentation, I just want to let you guys know that I handed out a physical copy of my presentation, so you should all have that sitting in front of you. Uh, the only favor that I ask of you is that you do not distribute this to the general public. Uh, obviously, it's okay that it's, it's being taped, uh, but please don't actually hand this out to anyone. Um, and the reason I say that is because this is only a summarized version of our full audit, which you guys do have in front of you too, that's, that's the bound documents that you have. So this is only summarized information in my presentation, and it does not contain our audit opinion, which is which is very important part of this document. So, Thank you in advance for, for that. And as always, any of you that don't feel a need to retain your copy, turn them back into me because I do use them for financial backup every now and then on things that we use, so I use extra copies. Okay, thank you. Now before I get into the numbers, um, I want to talk about our audit opinion first. Um, now there are three types of opinions you can receive as an auditee. So the first opinion, or the highest opinion you can receive, is what we call a clean or unmodified opinion. And that just simply means that we believe that the financial statements are reliable and are in compliance with our professional standards. Now the second type of opinion you can receive is what we call a modified or qualified opinion. Uh, that just simply means that for the most part we think they're reliable, but there may be a few exceptions to that. And then the worst opinion you can receive is what we call an adverse opinion which means that in our professional judgment, you cannot rely on the financial statements at all. So I am pleased to announce that at, as of March 31, 2016, the Village of Armada did receive the highest audit opinion, or what we call a clean or unmodified audit opinion. Now I do want to clarify that that just simply means, as I mentioned before, we believe that the financial information is, is reliable, and it's in accordance with our professional standards. We don't render any type of opinion on the financial health of the village. That's not what the focus of our audit is, and that's not what our opinion is on. Um, so I don't want that to, uh, to be misinterpreted. Moving over to the first slide. Was that, am I not to blind anyone here? <laughs> the first fund we're going to talk about is the general fund. Now, the general fund primarily derives its revenues from two sources. And actually, recently, three sources with your with the salvage inspection program over the last couple of years. Uh, but the primary sources of revenue from the general fund are property taxes, distributions from the state of Michigan for, for state sales tax, and then recently, uh, the salvage inspection program has, has really been a significant portion of the revenues in this fund. And we'll talk about that 
a little bit in my subsequent slides. But here we're looking at the balance sheet at the end of March 31st for the general fund. So you can see, in looking at the assets at the top, the general fund had about $445,000 in total cash on hand at the end of March, uh, $105,000 in investments, which is a CD. Um, finished the year with about $602,000 or $603,000 in total assets and liabilities or obligations against those assets of about $136,000 and finished the year with an ending fund balance of about $466,000. Now the important thing to note about the fund balance, and we went over this last year, out of that $466,000, $188,000 is restricted and cannot be used for general operations in the village. That $188,000, the most of that is almost, in fact, almost all of it, I believe, is for the salvage inspection program. So in, in one of my subsequent slides, I'm going to talk about that program a little bit, but what ends up happening is any revenues that you generate from that program and you do not spend in the year, they actually have to be set aside because they're restricted for a specific purpose. So they can only be used for that program, for, uh, for inspections, for uh, stolen vehicles, and things of that nature. So actually, $188,000 of that is restricted and the other $278,000 is what we call unrestricted or available for use in village operations. Now I'll talk about my recommended fund balance level in my next slide, uh, and, you know, where, where you guys are, where I think you should be, and what the state recommends. Now this next slide is the income statement for the general fund for March 31st, 2016. So you can see, looking at the top here, the general fund generated about $340,000 or $341,000 in property taxes throughout the year. Had another $160,000 or $161,000 in distributions from the state for state sales tax. You also have, under licenses, permits, fines, and fees, another $267,000 or $268,000. Now, $239,000 of that is from the salvage inspection program. So the salvage inspection program generated about $239,000 in revenue during the year for the general fund. Again, however, that is restricted uh, and can't be used for village operations. So the general fund generated about $1,035,000 during the year. Uh, it had total expenditures of about $970,000 during the year and finished the year with an ending fund balance of about $466,000. And as I mentioned, only $278,000 of that is unrestricted. So that's really the number you want to focus on is that $278,000. Now to put that into perspective, the state of Michigan recommends that at a minimum, your general fund balance be about 10% of annual expenditures in that fund. That's the minimum. Now at the end of the year, your unrestricted fund balance was about 27 or 28% of annual expenditures. So I still think it is a healthy general fund balance. But I will say I do not believe it's excessive. Uh, that 10% threshold, that's the, that's the minimum. So what that means is as you start approaching that 10% threshold, you really need to start taking steps to make sure that you're building that fund balance level back up. And quite frankly, we're a little bit more conservative. I think a community the size of the village of Armada, you know, we're just talking about scale here, I really think that should be closer to 15 or 20%. And looking at you guys, I really don't think it should be. It should get lower than that. So currently, you're sitting at about 27 or 28 percent. We'll look at some trend analysis in one of my subsequent slides, so you can see where your fund balance was five years ago compared to today. So you can kind of put that in perspective. Now, the next three funds that we're going to talk about are the street funds. These funds are a little bit different from the general fund in that these are what we call special revenue funds. You can see the top there, it's a special revenue. The reason we call these special revenue funds is because their revenues are restricted for a specific or a special purpose. And in this case, the revenues in these funds are restricted for the maintenance and construction of streets in the village. Now the major and local street funds, they generate their revenues from distributions from the state of Michigan. So the State of Michigan Act 51 fund actually gives the major local street funds almost all of their, their funding for the year. Now the municipal street fund, it actually generates almost all of its revenues from property taxes. Now I don't want to say that the municipal street fund is unique to the village of Armada, but it's not 
not every community has a municipal street fund. So that's actually a voted millage uh, in, the, in, in the village. And in fact, it's, it's, it's a great fund to have because it really helps supplement the major local street funds uh, in years that they have shortfalls. It really helps them you know, uh, you know, maintain the streets and, and, and get into some of these major construction projects that they get into. So it's really a, a great asset to have that fund. Now looking at the local street fund on the left, this is the balance sheet. The local street fund had about twenty-eight or twenty-nine thousand dollars in total assets for the year, had about eight hundred and thirty dollars in total liabilities, and finished the year with a total fund balance of about twenty-seven or twenty-eight thousand dollars. Now the state of Michigan does not have does not have any recommended minimum fund balance levels for these funds. But I think it's pretty fair to say uh, it would be reasonable to use the same threshold that we do for the general fund, that 10% level. And the local street fund currently has, uh, their fund balance is about 13% of annual expenditures. Now, the thing you have to keep in mind about these three funds is that it's common for their fund balances to fluctuate from year to year. So in years where you have major construction projects going on, you're gonna use up a lot of the fund balance. And in years where you don't have any construction projects, you're gonna start building that fund balance back up. So the important thing to keep in mind with these funds is always check the fund balance level and when you start approaching that 10% of annual expenditure number, just keep in mind that you probably, you know, you have to wait a few years to build that fund balance back up before you start committing yourself to, to, to projects. Looking at the major street fund here in the middle, you can see it had about eighty-two or $83,000 in total assets, had about forty dollars or $41,000 in total liabilities against those assets, and finish the year with a fund balance of about $42,000, or about 17% of annual expenditures. So I think both of these funds, in my opinion, um, are, are the fund balance levels are certainly not lower than the, than the recommended minimum. So I think they're within the, the normal range. And, now, and this bigger street should the state recommends 10%. Actually, the state doesn't have any recommendation on the street funds. That, that's almost my, my okay. personal recommendation, just to follow suit with the general fund. Again, that's the minimum. You don't want it to get lower than that 10 or so. Now, the municipal street fund, you can actually see, had about 243 or $244,000 in total assets, primarily cash at the end of the year, um, had about $5,300 of total liabilities, and about $238,000 in total fund balance for the year. In fact, in, in the case of the municipal street fund, that's, that's more than 100% of its annual expenditures. So, okay. municipal street fund does have a healthy fund balance, and like I mentioned in the previous slide, the great thing about the municipal street fund is you guys can use it to help fund the major local streets. This is the income statement for these three street funds. So you're starting with the local street, you can see that it generated about forty-one or forty-two thousand dollars in revenues, primarily distributions from the state of Michigan. It spent about $207,000, but uh, if you remember what happened during the 15, 16 year, you didn't have a lot of significant construction projects going on, so it was anticipated that you were gonna use the fund balance levels in these funds. So you had, the East, you had some of the East Main Street project going on. Uh, the village spent about $189,000 on that project. Uh, you had another $856,000 or so that was actually funded by MDOT for that project. Uh, you had Prospect, uh, project going on, and that cost the village about $139,000 during the year, and another $441,000 of that project was funded by MDOT. Um, you can see that the local street fund had $170,000 transferred in from other funds. That was actually transferred in from the, from the municipal street fund. So the municipal street fund transferred one hundred and seventy dollars over to the local street fund during the year to help supplement the, uh, the projects it had. So as I mentioned in my previous slide, the local street fund finished the year fund balance of about $28,000. Now the major street fund generated about $100,000 in total revenues. It had expenditures of about $246,000 during the year, but again, that was anticipated. We had major projects going on. And the municipal street fund actually provided $110,000 subsidy over the major street fund, uh, similar to that of the local street fund. And finished the year with the fund balance of about forty two dollars now you can see the municipal street fund generated about $136,000 in total revenues, primarily from property taxes. It had total expenditures of about $98,000, 
and they transferred about transferred two hundred eighty thousand dollars over, one hundred and seventy over to the local street fund, and another one hundred and ten over to the major street fund, and finished the year with a fund balance of about two hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars. Now this next slide is a state revenue trend analysis. We go all the way back to 2010 here. So here we're looking at the state revenue sharing in the, in the center column here. This is the state sales tax money that's, that's actually given to the general fund. And then on the right, you see distribution to street funds. So that's, that's the state of Michigan Act 51 fund uh, distributions that actually go to the major local streets. So you can see 2010 to 2011 for revenue sharing, you're generating about $138,000, $137,000 a year from the state of Michigan. That number's come all the way up to about $160,000 or $161,000 uh, at the end of 2016. So that's a positive uh, trend. And, you know, as you know, uh, the state of Michigan had some budget problems also back. You know, if we went a couple of years prior to this, 2008, 2009, that revenue sharing number would be even lower. Uh, so that's a result of the, of the economy improving a little bit. Very similar relationship with distribution to the street funds, which again is tied in, directly tied into uh, the state of Michigan's uh, economy and, and, the, and the state's budget. You can see in 2010 or 2011, you're, you're getting about $89,000 a year from the state. That number's come up over $140,000 uh, for 2015 and 2016. So that's a positive thing. Now, this next slide is a property tax revenue trend analysis here. We're going back five years to 2012. Um, you can see the peak year for property taxes was actually 2012, where you generated about five hundred five dollars or $506,000. That number has come down, uh, actually had a drastic fall in 2013. You can see it went down to $456,000. It's come up a little bit, and it's come all the way up to $477,000 at the end of 16. But you know, when you go back to 2012 and compare it to 2016, that's still about a $30,000 difference in property tax revenues, which is significant for, for a community the size of the village of Armada. I mean, that's about a that's about five or six percent. And you know, this situation has been a has been a serious problem for a lot of communities in the area, really in the state of Michigan. And really, it's because of some of the statutory limitations that are placed on property taxes. So. You have Proposal A, which limits you know, the, the, the growth in, in, in individual property to the lesser of 5% or CPI. And then you have the Headley Amendment, which they get you a second time, which limits the, the village as a whole. So you know, when they passed the, when, they, when these, uh, these statutes became law, you know, no one ever anticipated a situation where property values were going to decline like they did you know, back in 2008 and 2009. So you had a situation where property values declined by as much as 25 or 30 percent in one year, and then because of the limitations placed on the taxable value of those same properties, it's going to take, you know, 10, 15, 20 years for those property tax levels to get back to where they were right. before the decline. So that that's that's a situation that everyone's been fighting with, and uh, of course the village of Maine has been fighting with too. I mean, the good news is when you look at this trend, uh, the property tax levels are going up. So uh, they're certainly not going to go up at a, at a very rapid pace, uh, but, they, but they are going up a little bit. So that, that is a positive trend for sure. Now this next slide is the general fund balance level trend analysis going back to the same year, 2012. You can see back in 2012, the fund balance in the general fund was about $395,000. That number's come up to $466,000 at the end of 2016, but um, the thing I want to draw your attention to is in 2012, that $395,000, that was all unrestricted funds, okay? So at March 31, 2016, only $278,000 of that 466 is unrestricted. So in reality, the way you have to look at it is the general fund balance or the unrestricted portion of it to use for day-to-day for, for -day operations for the village has really come down by about $117,000 since 2012. So that's, that's about a 30% decline in your general fund balance since 2012. So that's, that's a trend that you're, that you're going to have to figure out how to reverse. Uh, because like I said, currently your, your general fund balance level is sitting about 27 or 28% of annual expenditures in that fund. But you know, if you look at this trend, that was more like 50, 60% you know, back in 2012. 
and now it's it's fallen under 30 percent. So you really need to start taking measures now and make sure that it doesn't it, it does not get any lower than it currently is. So you should not be budgeting for losses in the general fund. The next two funds I want to talk about uh, briefly, I, I want to talk about probably what I would call the most important statement uh, for these two funds. Uh, I'm certainly not implying that these funds are more important than the other ones. I'm just saying this is uh, probably the, the balance that I think is the most important statement for the water and sewer funds, though. Um, focusing on, uh, on these funds. Now, these funds are a lot different than the general fund and the street funds. These are what we call business type activities or what we call enterprise funds. And we call them those in our profession because they are accounted for more similar to that of a private company, a for-profit company. And that's because if you think about it, these funds don't generate revenues from property taxes. Um, they generate, primarily generate their revenues from charging the residents for using the systems. So that's why it's accounted for uh, similar to that of a for-profit company. Now looking at the balance sheet and the sewer fund, you can see there's a new there's a new asset category here that, that didn't exist for the general fund in the, in the street funds. Under non-current assets, there's an asset called fixed assets. Now, fixed assets are the actual water and sewer plants themselves and all the major equipment associated with them. So it makes sense that in these two funds, the major asset category would be fixed assets. So we call them non-current assets because they're not assets that can be easily spent or used. So you can't pay bills with fixed assets, with equipment or, or, the, or the plant itself. So these are basically what we call non-liquid assets. So even though the sewer fund had about 3.5 or 3.6 million dollars in total assets, 2.9 of it was tied up in what we call non-liquid assets. And that's, that's, that's a normal relationship. Um, that's not something that's unique to the, to the village's uh, water and sewer funds. That's what, what you would expect. Sewer fund had about $38,000 in total liabilities. Um, and if you look at the bottom here, looking at net position, we have three net position categories. The one you should really focus on is the unrestricted net position. That's equivalent to the general fund balance, if you will. So that's basically the net position in, the, in these two funds that you can spend. That's not tied up in those, in those fixed assets and the equipment that, that I was just talking about. So for the sewer fund, that currently sits at about two hundred sixty-seven or two hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars, or if you look at it another way, it's about it's about fifty-five percent of, of annual expenses in that fund. So I think your sewer fund has has a healthy un unrestricted net position or healthy fund balance, if you will. Looking at the water fund, again very similar. Water fund had about four point two million dollars in total assets. Three point eight of those assets are tied up in those non-liquid assets or fixed assets. Now, the water fund had about $1.7 million in total liabilities, and almost all of it was in the form of, uh, of bonds, um, and that's, that's something that the sewer fund doesn't have. So that, that's actually your dwarf bond that you have that you're currently paying off. And that expires in October of 2024, so that's when that, when that bond issuance ends. Now, looking at the net position for the water fund, you can see that the unrestricted portion of the net position of the water funds about $247,000, $248,000, or about 82 or 83 percent of its annual expenses. So again, I think both the water and sewer fund have healthy fund balance levels. We talked about this last year, and I want, I want to bring it up again because I think it's very important. I want to talk about the salvage vehicle inspection program a little bit, and I want to talk about our audit process a little bit uh, to let you guys know what we do when we're here. Um, you know, Joe uh, is here all the time, Becky and Michelle, and they, they, they see what, what we have going on all the time, but you guys don't necessarily know what we do when we're here. Starting with the salvage vehicle inspection program, um, the maximum fee for inspections is $100. That's actually a, a state rule. And you guys actually split it 50-50. I believe the it's like 53 and 47. I think is how the, how the you know, the village keeps a portion of it, and the inspector gets a um, gets a portion of it too. Um, the, now, this is the important thing: the fees collected for the program are restricted, so they can only be used for law enforcement purposes that affect stolen vehicles, vehicle parts, and inspections. Now, it's common for communities to use these funds to pay for things like computer equipment for the police department. Uh, vehicles is a big one. That, you know, that, that's a big expenditure that people use uh, these monies for. And, then, and that, that's allowable. 
Uh, as long as you you can somehow tie that purchase into you know stolen vehicles, vehicle parts, and inspections, you're okay uh, to use the funds for, for those purposes. But again, the important thing is that's why we have that restricted fund balance that's completely related to this program, and that can't be used for the general day-to-day -day operations of the village. Now, we do have some recommendations for the village. We kind of talked about this last year. Uh, and setting up a new separate fund for it to completely get it out of the general fund. Um, it's not required. That's kind of a judgment call. And kind of how we do that is, you know, three or four years ago, before the program really took off, you know, really wasn't generating a lot of revenues. It really didn't justify having its own fund. But now, you know, if it's going to continue to generate two, two hundred thousand dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars of revenue, it definitely, in my opinion, just you know, it, that warrants having a, a separate fund for it. And I know you guys internally have created a, you know, you have another checking account for it, so at least you can see that the cash has been separated from the general operating cash in the general fund. Um, the other major issue that we have with it is the, the method of payments. Um, the one thing that's unique about this program is, even though it's been around for a while, it, it, believe it or not, it is not utilized by a lot of communities. And as a result, it's not really regulated that well by the state of Michigan. So they don't really don't have a lot of rules related to this program. Uh, we actually make a lot of phone calls to them. I think sometimes I think they think we're crazy. <laughs> but uh, uh, the Secretary of State office, uh, we, we've had a lot of conversations with them about this program. We actually obtained a lot of independent information from them to help audit this program. Um, but one of the things that they discourage is, the, is handling any cash. So they really discourage any inspectors from handling cash because it really can lend itself to fraud. Not that we suspect that fraud's happening, just the opportunity is available uh, if there is a lot of cash involved. So they, they, they specifically told us that they uh, it's certainly not a, a rule or a requirement. You won't see that in any law. But for best practices, they really discourage the inspectors from handling any cash. All, every every transaction should be a check and should be made out directly to the village or made up for, for proper accounting purposes. I want to briefly talk about our audit process. Now, we, we generally come in in two waves. So we do what we call our preliminary audit. So we do that, we're actually testing transactions. So we actually test all, you know, all of the major accounting functions of the village. So we're looking at purchasing. So we're actually pulling copies of invoices, looking at those for evidence, looking at cash receipts. So what happens to cash from the time it's receded here in the village until the time it gets into the bank? You know, is there, is there an unusual delay? Is, is it taking two weeks from cash? And from the time cash gets here, the time it gets into the bank. Uh, we're looking at utility billing, so we're making sure that all the rates are in accordance with your, um, you know, the rates that you have approved. We're making sure that residents are being billed, um, you know, for proper usage and at proper rates. We're looking at adjusting journal entries. That's, that's an important part of our audit. So adjusting journal entries are things that are outside of the normal accounting cycle. So that'd be if someone found a, a mistake that, and they had to make a, a manual adjustment to the general ledger. That's very important for us to look at because we want to make sure, number one, we want to know why someone made an entry. You know, was it an was it an error, or are they trying to cover something up? So we're, so we're looking for paper trails on that, and we're making sure that someone has approved the journal entry. Uh, you know, the second person looking at it, the uh, other person that's making. It. We're looking at payroll, so we're making sure that uh, people are getting paid for approved rate at the approved rates for time that they've actually worked. Um, we're making sure that all the payroll taxes are, are being paid. Things of that nature. We're actually doing our own independent bank reconciliations, and we actually obtain information directly from the banks um, to help us throughout that process. We also do year-end reconciliations. That actually, we have to do that in order to generate that, uh, that report and give our audit opinion. And as I mentioned, we do independent bank reconciliations. We reconcile all the general ledger accounts uh, by examining support for balances, uh, by using audit techniques. Uh, that we establish in our, in our professional standards. One document that we use uh, as part of our audit is what we call an audit program. Now, when I, the audit program is something where it's basically like an audit, it's our audit procedures, it's almost like a checklist. Now, typically our audit program or audit procedure checklist is about 75 to 100 pages. Um, so that's, that's what we use. Uh, we customize those for all of our audit clients. Uh, you know, we have to assess risk 
figure out where we think um, some of our audit risks are. And there are certain things that we have to have in there as part of our professional standards also. Uh, in addition to our audit, we're in contact with the village throughout the year. Um, I think it's been a great, you know, it's, it's a great relationship, I think, on, on both ends. Um, we love to be in contact throughout the year because, you know, if there are any potential issues or problems, you know, we'd like to know about that throughout the year. There would be nothing worse than coming in after the year's already over and discovering uh, things that happened months ago that, you know, could have been taken care of uh, with a phone call or email. So, and that's always been the relationship we've had with the village. With the village. Uh, it's been a great relationship. This helps us identify any potential accounting or auditing issues early, like I said. We also assist with a lot of state filing and compliance requirements. We assist with Act 51 compliance. So what that is, is you, if you remember, your major local street funds are funded by the State of Michigan Act 51 fund. But you're also required to submit a report to them, to MDOT. I almost call it like a tax return. It's similar to a tax return, and you file it directly with MDOT. That's actually separate from your financial statement audit. We also have an F65 filing, which is submitted to the Department of Treasury. That's very similar to that report you have, but the state of Michigan wants you to submit something else. Um, so we assist with that filing. We also assist with the EBIT support for state sales tax revenue sharing. Um, you have certain requirements that you have to meet and certain things you have to file uh, you know, to be in compliance with that and get your full state revenue sharing money. Um, we also submit a copy of the annual audit to the state of Michigan. I have. Does anyone have any questions for me? Thank you for turning off the lights. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in your, on this sub, salvage title fund. Yes. Now this is kind of, a, well it's not a gray area, but it's not an area everybody's really familiar with. Like you say, you're still asking a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. um, is there some talk about leaving a little bit of that money that we could use? Because you can see, uh, based upon those uh, uh, property tax reductions and revenue share reductions, is exactly why our uh, fund balance has been going down. Had we had those, it really would have been going up. Uh, but we are where we are. Now, we need to have some of that title, salvage title, be able to use for other things in the police department. That may not be directly. Sure. I mean, the, the problem is, it, it's one of those, if you read the statute, it, it, it appears to be very black and white. Well, we're not trying to sneak yeah. nothing through. Right. I, I do know in practice that a lot of people, you know, they, you know, they can tie it to anything related to their police department. They, they will make, they'll try to make an argument that that's tied into that program. So, I mean, it's. I mean, again, I think if you buy, if you purchase a vehicle with it, that's that's a right. That's yeah. you, which you, you can link which it is to right in itself. Computers. But we're still accumulate money and, and have a bad fund balance situation. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, we're going to want eventually to use this money, you know, not to buy bigger and better cars with more bells and whistles or something on them, but to spend that money. It, but it's clear you can't. You know, you can't take it and say, I'm going to buy a DPW truck or, you know, that's... No, no, I, I, I'd still say, I like the idea of keeping it in the police department, mm -hmm. but even if you could pay 20% of your wages from it or, or some well, kind of... Well, we pay wages on any of the salvage title we didn't work. I know. I'm just talking about in general. Are, we do kind of review it a lot. I mean, there's things like um, all of the receipt books that we use. We're, we're mm -hmm. processing a little bit of that money towards getting it out of self title because that's eating up the majority of those books even. Right, you're going to have to utilize the receipt books. For yeah, the especially right. now with when we're going to, we are moving towards making sure that they get checks instead of cash, right. where, you know, cash could have been one inspection or it could have been 20 inspections, and that goes in as one receipt. But each check goes in as one receipt on each each one. So they are eating up the things like the receipt books and some administrative time and stuff. So and I think you're thinking along the right lines. I mean, yeah. what you do is you, you have to take a step back and, and think, okay, what, you know, what, you know, what can we? I would like to see something be able to be used in the department that isn't directly tied back to salvage title. Yeah. Yeah. And that's but I know we right. can. I'm just saying future. You know, do we? Try to talk to a congressman or something. I mean, I think that's probably the, your only option at this point. And then, like I said, I... Because we're getting this deep crap here. I mean, you can see this thing going down. I remember when 
I remember when it was such a great audit there, you wouldn't ever say anything like this. I remember we had 6% or, uh, uh, you know, have a half a year, six months worth of uh, fund, balance. fund balance. And you're not even close to that now. My own personal thing says we should have that much. I don't think I don't think ten percent is good at all. Oh no, and like I said, that's 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 the bare minimum. Yeah, but, but you're right. Joe and I have talked about this no, it's not a ton of times. When you look at that twenty eight, that twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine percent threshold that I'm talking about that you currently have, you know, you, it you know you can't look at it on its own. You know what's what is what's the you know what's the trend right, right now? Yeah. You know, we're, are you coming from ten or fifteen percent, or are you coming from fifty percent? Problem with you guys is you're coming from 50 or 60 percent, and now you're sitting at 27, 28 percent. So that that I guess that's that's the major concern. This council's done a lot of things that cut costs. So we're, you know, we run a part-time police department. We've uh, changed our with our secretaries or deputies how we handle it, and we've saved a lot of money. But we have never been prepared not to give our employees increases in wages and. We've never taken a real hard stand on stuff like that. I'm just not sure how much we, yes. we're yes. willing to do that. It's a, you know, and again, this salvage thing is a little bit of, if we could use a little bit there, could go a long way. We, if we raise at a mill, uh, what do we get? Thirty, forty thousand dollars 40000 So that's not enough if we, if this, General fund keeps going down. So we need lobbying to be able to use something out of there for our department. Yeah, like I mean, said, there should be a good incentive to do this. Yeah, I said that the program just isn't utilized very much either. That's that's. Well, that's why our, we're so busy. <laughs> It's supposed, yeah. to, it's supposed to be a service that the state of Michigan is actually providing, Correct. and they're not doing it anymore. So it's left up to local municipalities to pick up the slack and do mm -hmm. it. We are fortunate enough to have part-time officers that, so we are able to do it. The problem is, is that the, the statute that it's under is so old, it probably does need to be revamped and looked at. I mean, everyone knows now secretarial costs are more, administrative costs are more, auditing costs are more. We need to be able to offset our costs. Right now, with it being an election year, now is not the time to talk to congressmen because they're not gonna touch it till after election time. So it's already on the bucket list of the police department and the police commissioner after election time is over, when we would have more of a beneficial way of talking to them and getting their ear. Because the same people who took our funds away need to help give us a little bit. Right, right. Give us a little use of that. Sure. And, and we talked about this last year too, that I mean the one positive, huge positive thing about the salvage program is you do have the money set aside to, to buy a police vehicle. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a great, that's a great yeah, it's, it's not gonna like require you to, you know, pay thirty thousand dollars out of the general operating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do I tell the how do I tell the guys I'm having coffee with that we got a hundred thousand dollars in our general fund that we can't touch, but we have to raise their taxes? Because they they maintain the same service we're giving, not to improve. They're not gonna like that. Ask them if their taxes have gone up or down in the last ten years and their services have stayed the same. Don't ask them that. Yeah, what they'll say is their water bill and their sewer bill has gone way up. But, those that same taxes, taxes. but that's not how people look at yeah. that. Well, that's what you're supposed to be representing and in, in, in saying them on. I am. There you but go. But they look at the bottom line. You may not, but the average tax holder, payer does. We got openings. Actually, for we've lowered. We got openings for them to get involved and get knowledgeable. They can sit here and sit here and watch it and get knowledgeable on it. I beg them to do that. They won't do it. You know that. I beg you guys to get people for the planning commission. I beg you guys to serve on it yourself. You won't do it. Some of us most have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Well, we're increasing our officers to four now. There's three going to school in September, so we'll have more money again. It's going to be spent. <laughs> yeah, but the, peop the the other people in Michigan want the service, right. and they can't right. get it anywhere else. Right. Well, so see, that's the fault of the Michigan yeah. state it is. itself. It is. You know, and to uh, harbor that part themselves is terrible. And the thing is, do nothing. Well, maybe I mean, they'll why? move to Armada, so it's closer for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a problem, you know. The state 
state does what they want to do and then they don't do enough in one area. Then that's the problem. So. Thank you. Thank you. Curtis, very good job. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You too, Amy. Yes, Amy. Hey, good job. She got it last year. You see yes. Amy's they, they on turned. his right hand side. Yeah. That, that really counts. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like me to make the motion? Yes, fine. Yeah. I make a motion to accept the audit for fiscal year ending March 31st, 2016 and to place on file. I'll support it. Who would have supported any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Again, thank you, uh, Curtis and Amy. Very, very good work for our village. Thank, thank you. you. Thank and I know it's been a pleasure, even though I was an employee for years, <laughs> your father was great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Do a good job, Bobby, with your footsteps. Thank you. Well, let's see, what's next here? Uh, Mr. Audit, uh, Mr. Ballard with his uh, vaccine for our really streets. Do you have a comment or something on yes, this? Yes, I have. Uh, I have not received any quotes for crack sealing yet. <laughs> so I'd like to keep this on the agenda. Uh, Does that mean the our tracks all stopped? <laughs> yeah, they all stopped. They just fell over themselves. Went out there and yeah. said, stop, and that was it. Yeah, because um, we have a coat, a coat on you yet. Yeah, that would be great. So um, I want to keep it on the agenda uh, for our next meeting and just continue to solicit uh, bids. bids for this. Because I, well, we're looking at, I believe Ed and I talked about it. We're, in some place between seven and ten thousand linear feet of this, and uh, I think that next year we're going to have to do some work down in Madison Street because it's all just alligator crack down there. Mm -hmm. and there's a spot down just down from your place down there, and so uh, I have to do some work on that. Probably have to call that guy in that comes in and digs it out and puts a hot patch in there or something. I don't know. So anyway, well, we have some time yet for the. Yeah, for the fall seal. yet, you know, naturally, I think in September and October yet. Yeah. So if we can get it done before the first of November, oh, I certainly would be super. Yeah, we're going to continue on this. Thank you, Lyle. Thank you. And the police department website. Uh, Michelle, did you have a question or? Uh, uh, either one of us. Yeah. And looking, uh, Michelle brought it up that while they were redoing the village website, the police website, that's a has a page linked off of it is really out of date and it's also maintained by the current the old, web, the old web 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 map. Right. So and staying with that they'd like to make a little a few more forms available on the website and make it a little more user friendly and you know you have it on your tablet and you look at it on your phone and you look at it on your computer it all has the same look and not all distorted and pictures everywhere and things like that because it doesn't automatically configure to what kind of screen you're looking at. Right. So what does it do? It's creating them a whole new website. What's page. it telling you? I mean, I don't use it. Maybe the I police should department be. one? Yeah. It, it doesn't have a whole lot on it. Um, part of the problem is, is uh, Andrew has not been able to, he's not been getting phone calls back from the guy that designed it, so he has not been able to get the things. I don't know anybody it. that's looking at this. Don't well, but they will. If you me. get if you get one that, I mean, that could advertise the stone, the, the sewage title stuff, it's like, because it would have the phone numbers on it, and we might be able to use them to sell the title. Um, you know, that type of stuff. So, um, you know, the thought with Mike and I, because when I first talked to Mike about it, it, you know, new chief, new regime, but, you know, it's a good time to put a new page together. And the guy from Revise, which is where we're getting ours done, um, gave them the same cost, uh, the same deal that we got, which Mike was comfortable with. I think Sherry talked to him, I've talked to Sherry, I've talked to Mike, I've talked to the guy at Revise. So what he did was just prepare a proposal just like we had before with ours. And um, that's what it is. Do we have a record of knowing how many people you know, tried to look at the other one, like versus no, our site? That, no, I, 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 can't, I can't get, at this point in time, I can't get any information from our website. Okay. Just so folks know out there, the website is not working at this point. We are not getting emails. So if you're sending stuff to the clerk or clerical email, please contact the office and we will give you a different 
email. So, so if we don't change the police site, well, they want emails also. They don't have emails right now. Right now, I don't think it changes anything for our citizens. I nobody's telling me they're using this or trying to get into it and not be able to find out. Especially because it's already out of date. Well, and there's no right. email. There's, yeah. you know, the biggest thing for them is emails. We they wanted they want emails, um, which we could do without a website, but, um, you know, it's. 2016. Everybody needs to have some kind of website out there for them. They do. So in other words, you don't want to hold this any any longer or much longer. What hold what? Uh, this uh, website business. For the in other words, put it off for the cost part of it itself, or until you get a hit on our own or whatever. Well, right now the website that's out there, we can't change it even if we wanted to. If the police department number changed, we couldn't change it on there. We no. can't get anything changed on it. No. So this is the only way of getting it at least back into some kind of control, so we can at least have something that we can control out there as far as information or anything. Cause there's nothing. So that's due to the the old web design person yeah. is not touching it. We can't even get we can't get through to it to make any changes. Right. So, so, in other words, this would be a fresh start. This would right. be just like the one that we're bringing in in house that they maintain themselves. Okay. So and it would everybody be everybody understands the it's a takes, fresh start. takes the third party out of it. So, with that, I'd like to make a motion to accept the proposal from revise in the amount to not to exceed amount of twelve hundred dollars for the first year and seven hundred and fifty for each year after, and to allow the clerk and our president to sign on behalf of the village after review by the village attorney. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? If not, this is going to be a roll call because it's spending money. Yes, sir. Cooper? Yes. Ballard? Yes. Bullock? Uh, yes. Um, whoops. Hold on a second. Conan? No. Belkey? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Clark? No. Motion carried. Uh, we have no closed session tonight. And the up and coming agenda, if any the council would like to do you want to keep these main also? Yep. Keep <laughs> 100 rules done. How uh, about the uh, the bridge over the river Kwai? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to keep that bridge on here. Mm -hmm. Any other items? Are you serious? Are you no, no, the, okay. no, no. It's got to come back. Nagels. I don't keep on and on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be on the agenda when the attorney comes around. Not just next day. time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. It will not be on the agenda if the attorney's not here. Okay. okay. All right. Citizen comments. Hey. Everybody, everybody at <laughs> home. Heard us talk, all right? So. Council comments at this time, please. No council comments at this time. I'd like to thank all the residents and again all the police officers and even those that aren't police officers, the uh, personnel, the um, security detail and everything. Thank you so much for helping the village have a great fair. I uh, you know it brought a lot of people into town and hopefully we see that with our school district numbers going up and everything else. So thank you everyone for taking the time out and making it a positive experience for everyone. Yeah. I would like to also add on to what Sherry say and congratulate the fair board on uh, having another great fair for our community. They did a great job. Good, thank you. Mr. President, I would uh, also like to say that we have our uh, uh, sidewalk project out for bid and uh, we're waiting to get some bids in for the sidewalks to be replaced. We should have that for the next meeting. Uh, no, I believe the opening is going to be on September the 19th, is that correct? No, it's, uh, it's Friday. Oh, it's this coming Friday? Yeah. I'm sorry. This August. Friday. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 It's I, I was going to question yeah. that. We yeah. got to move it up. Yeah. Well, I'll correct me if I'm wrong here, but with the fair in town, the DPW's got a lot of extra work to do and uh, putting up barricades and signs and different things. Yeah. 
see my dog. That was always in really good order. They did. They do a fine job. Uh, don't think about it. And the guy you serve, they always take care of the, uh, take care of that. And they did an excellent cleanup too. So uh, they was around uh, picking up papers that was dropped. And today I saw them working very diligently, uh, removing the items that they had, you know, put up for detour or whatever too. So the full day um, job just taking down those parking signs. They were yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they, they did it. Putting them up and taking them down. Excellent job for the yep. department's got Great three job. three men. You know, for years now they've done an excellent job. So they should be welcome. Sure, they get paid, but still, I think it's an honor to tell them that they did something good. Sure. Uh, community events, uh, we did that already. Actually. No, actually, I have a quick community event, if that's okay. Um, the high school and the middle school have their Tiger Days, days coming up for on Monday and Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then they close for lunch and they're back open from 12 to 3. So come uh, have your child ready for the yearbook picture. They get their schedules. They get all the school year information again at the middle school and high school Monday, August 29th and Tuesday, August 30th. Very good. See, I don't have any trouble. So Me I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. It is fitting and proper for an adjournment. The time is 8.07. I make the motion to adjourn. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.